I meet car enthusiasts all the time. You know, a lot of them are, when I say small enthusiasts, but then at the other end of the spectrum, meet somebody that is totally consumed by the old car world. And I think I met him this past Saturday, Lee Jacobson. Well, glad to meet Thanks you. Thanks for inviting me over. <laughs> uh, I was at the old car festival at Greenfield Village in, in Dearborn, Michigan. Like I do, I just chat up people. And so he tell, started to tell me about, well, I'm an MG guy. And I said, well, I'm an MG guy. I talked about some cars and he said, oh, by the way, I bought an E-Type Jaguar new in the 60s and I still have it. I said, bingo, you're the guy. <laughs> so here we are. Not quite a barn find though. No, that's okay though. <laughs> so is this the Jag you bought new? This, this one, yes. No kidding. It's now got 71,000 miles on it. I'm about five or 6,000 behind because I tried to put 1,000 miles for every year I was old. How old were you when you bought this new? I think I was 21 or 22. This was from a dealership in Detroit? Uh, yeah, I believe Falvey or something like that. The story, uh, from what, the way I remember it, is I'm standing out there drooling over all the beautiful old cars, and this guy pulls in with his car, goes up to a salesperson, just like you. Sir, I don't like it. Well, what's wrong with it? You just bought it last week. I want a red one. Why do you want a red one? That's what my girlfriend likes. She wants a red one. Well, sir, it's a used car now. You've had it for a week. It's got 70 miles on it. Um, well, what can you give me as a trade-in? He oh, mentions geez. a price that's like half the price of new. Sir, I'll give you 500 more than that. Do we have a deal? Said, son, you just bought yourself a Jag. And so it's essentially new. And so that was 55 years ago. Never seen winter. Yes, it's under. And that's original paint. Original paint, original everything. The only thing I took out was this black and spoken something radio, and I put in the latest and greatest cassette tape <laughs> radio. Yeah, I wish yeah. I had that radio back. All right, so here we start the MGs. Boy, you got a bunch of them. This oh. one I traded a big MG SA for. What I use it for is uh, I've got a lot of friends in our club that own farms, and we've all heard of rodeos and the gals doing the barrel racing. We put out big bales of hay in these big fields, and we do MG barrel racing. Jeez. And this is my barrel racer, so I just, you know, you just throw it around the track, throw it around the fields, and have fun with it. So this this was the big block in the MG world. The 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 earlier TF had a 1250, and this was the 1500. This is the de more desirable one. I've never driven it. Is it a good car? It goes like a banshee. Yeah, it goes very quick. Um, original paint. This is this is an original. Original paint. If we look at Post-war MGs, after World War II, this is a 45, so the war just, just it's, ended. Just it's ended. TC0780. But remember, how, what was the first VIN number for all MGs of any model? It's their phone number, which is 0251. You dial 251 back in the 30s, 40s, 50s, MG. you would dial MG. So the TC was the first car after World War II, and this is the one that American soldiers coming back from Europe fell in love with. You could buy a small car that handled well, they shipped them back home and they started to race at places like you know, Lime Rock and Watkins Glen. So the TC morphed into the TD, which is this model over here. Which happens to be the very first one. And as you see this picture right there, that's this how I found it. This is the first TD? This is my first TD. There's a picture ah. of it in the field on the rating staple. And then the TD morphed into the TF, which we yeah. have over here and over there. That's the classic line of MG before they got into the swoopier MGAs and MGBs that we all are familiar with. So this is the car you found in the field. So you were driving around a field and saw that. That's the only thing salvageable is the frame and the ammeter gauge on this. Now this was, a, this was painted in 1970, this green. You painted it. And I, I've done all my paintings. But anyway, on this one, uh, urethanes were just coming out. They were being used on aircraft. Uh, Sherwin Williams said, Lee, you gotta try this polysol. And I said, okay, put it on, it's still, Nice. After 50 years, man, I painted a TC. It's not here anymore. In lacquer, the same color, and you could see a vast difference. This car had a very crazy story to get. Coming back from a sales call, and I'm in Columbus, Ohio, and we all stop at our favorite place, Cracker Barrel, right? Guy next table over says, "See this? He saw these pins, and I make these. These are closed and A pins." He says, "Aren't those MGs?" And I says, "Boy, you're right." Uh, well, my dad had a couple of MGs. Well, what's your dad doing with them? Not much. He's room temperature. Well, what are you going to do with them? We got to sell the house. The kid next door, though, me, he says he wants to buy them. He wants to hot rod them. I says, well, I'll tell you what, you're not going to sell them to that kid. Why? Because I'm going to give you my card, and whatever that kid offers you, I will double the price. He had no idea what this was. Mm -hmm. It's the only one I've ever seen with original kind of maroon paint on it and everything else. It's a saloon. 
This is how I pulled it out of the barn. So it was, all, is, it was all like that? All like, this is okay. barn dirt. Now you buffed out a piece here, look at that. Wow. Well, I shined this up, there was a, they had dropped a can of paint on it, so I wanted to see if I could take it off. So I just buffed it up. You can see where there's a couple of splatters. A six cylinder motor? It is. This is for sale? Oh yeah, to the, but it's gotta be a young kid. And it'll be a very good price. So we gotta get him an, enthused. Isn't that cool? Do you but, know what you want for it? I've had offers in the 20 range, mm -hmm. but uh, it'd be probably half of that, even really? less. It depends on the if kid. It's a, so, yeah. All right. So if you're if you're a young enthusiast watching Barn Fight Hunter <laughs> and you want to dive into the world of classic cars, this might be a, a candidate for you. This, yeah, this is a classic. This mm -hmm. is a classic. Lee, thank you so much. It's well, been a it's great good seeing trip. you. Take care, and uh, it's been a lot of fun. I was at the Greenfield Village Old Car Festival last weekend. Amazing event. It's open to cars 1932 and earlier. So somebody came to me and said, you got to meet my friend Melvin over there. He's got a great story. You won't believe it. And I'm a real sucker for a story. I love cars, but even more than that, I love the stories about, from cars. Melvin, thanks for inviting me out to your wonderful farm. What well, a beautiful you. evening. I'm glad to have you come. So this is a 1927 Chrysler. Give, give me a thumbnail story about this. Well, the original owner was a fellow that lived in Findlay, Ohio, and he was a bachelor, lived with his mother, and he ordered the, the car from a dealer right there in Findlay. So that's what he did, and I got pictures of him uh, standing by his car when he got home and his mother looking the car over when he got home. And, so he, and then he was so proud of this, he put it in his garage, nailed the windows up so the sun wouldn't hit it and walked to work. This was the love of his life and the paint is thin, they tell me, because he polished it all the time. And how many miles are on it? 20, uh, no, it's got 18,000. So we did a little math on the way here. It's a 95 year old car with 18,000 miles it's about 190 miles a year driven average. So he owned it for how long? Um, the board in here, I think it was 41 years. Man, I got the right figures right here. Uh, James Shank, 1927, first owner, 41 years. Mm -hmm. Second owner, Ohio, so Ohio, Findlay, Ohio, first owner, Findlay, Ohio, second owner. Yep, Bill Reynolds, and that's his picture. Third owner is Bruce Petty. My neighbor, our farm joined each other, and he was a nice fella. And uh, he came over one morning. I was working here in the shop, and he shows me this picture. And he says, uh, what do you think of that car? And I says, well, what is it? He says, it's a 1927 Chrysler. And I says, well, what do you want that for? And he says, because when I was 16, my dad bought a brand new one just like it. And <laughs> then he leans over, and he says to me, he says, you know, I sold my wild oats in a car like this. So us guys, I guess you could, you know, it's roomy. The, so and, that's you. Yep. So these that's are the, the first year we went to, Bo uh, to Dearborn to Greenfield village. And the story behind this is this is the fella that was my friend and I always helped him work on it. And he always said, someday I want you to have this car. And I thought, yeah, right. If you want me to have the car, give me the title in my hand. I, I'm not telling his only daughter at the funeral home, oh, by the way, your dad wanted me to have the car. Where's the title? What happened was this fella's wife got cancer and passed away. So he was my friend and neighbor. And one night I came in to wash up and he's sitting at the table and he's grinning. And I says, what are you so happy about? And he says, I brought you over that title. And I says, wow, that's really neat. And he says, wait a minute, there's a couple stipulations goes with that. And I says, all right, lay them on me. He says, one, when my time comes, could I have it in my funeral possession if it's not raining or winter? And <laughs> okay, that's fair. You gotta die in the summer. Okay, I get it. Yep, and then the next thing he says, I, I giving you the title, but I didn't sign off <clears throat> because I still want some ownership. So I called my insurance company and got it insured. And about four days later, I got to thinking, what if I was in a tragic accident? Would my insurance company back me for a car that don't even have my name on the title? So I went to the Secretary of State and they said, you gotta get a joint title, Survivor owns it. They, I took it to Greenfield Village the first year and I won Curator's Choice, which is most original. I think there was 600 cars that year. Man. And so, they told me on Saturday that I won the award and they wanted to present it to me in a parade. They used to have a parade on Sunday and I wanted him to receive the award. Yeah, yeah. Just putting him in the car to go to the parade to receive his award. 
when Bill Reynolds, the second owner, came along. So I got a picture, three uh, owners out of so four. So the four, those are the three owners together? Yep. No kidding. So yeah, I'm looking at this pinstripe. It's got gray pinstripe on the black. Then down here on this belt is another gray pinstripe, blue, black, I guess black again or blue. How intricate. I mean, all this pinstriping, and it's all original. This is from This is all original, and it was hand pinstriped. Another feature this has got, in the summer, your feet get real hot in there. So the designers, oh, look at that. they designed it that if you crank it up an inch, the air deflects down to your feet, and that cools your feet off. Uh, if you want more air, you crank it up higher. That can't be the original interior. Yeah. That's, I was telling you about covering the seats up, the moss couldn't get to it. So that's original. So you don't find any uh, seats like that today that haven't got moth holes in them. So that's, that's mohair. Yeah, and I explained that at shows to people, got kids to explain it to them, and mm -hmm. one little fella said to me, he says, how many mohairs did it take to make this car? You know, that was a good question. And then... Uh, Unusual color, it's like... Yeah, the blue, kind of, it's kind of a purple color. Yeah, I, I don't know if maybe beans this is right up against the other. Maybe this was the original oh, color and yeah. maybe sun or something. I don't know. So, so this is interesting. Chrysler 60. Chrysler model numbers mean miles per hour. Chrysler 60. Yep. Wow. So, and so how fast have you had it? I only, I probably maybe 40. Okay. I don't know. Right. I, it's so old. If you blow the engine up, you're, yeah, it's yeah, hard true. to get parts. Can you show us the motor? Sure. So look at this old sticker here. So is that like February 6th, 1955? I think so. And the and the mileage was 15,400 yep. something in night, well, when I was one year old. Wow. <laughs> Flathead, straight six. Yep. Good for 60 miles an hour. Yep. Look at this little service record. Yeah. Isn't that something? Another that, neat thing is the oil can. I see a little oil can. Yep. And, and this, Delco Remy. Now yeah, that Delco a, Remy. They still got it. Right. That, that was that became a GM brand. Yeah. Well, back then they were any brand. Yeah. Wow. And I think the horn was made in Jackson, Michigan. Oh, look at that. Sparks Washington Company, Michigan, Jackson, Michigan. Yeah. <laughs> Can you start this? Sure. Usually starts better, but I didn't have the throttle opened up. And you can't keep your foot on the gas pedal and on the starter at the same time. And I thought it was warm enough it would start. But this is your hand throttle and this is your spark retard. And so this is this engine's original, never been rebuilt? No. I mean, this guy worked at that gas station. And once a year, he would take this car to work with him. And the hoists were outside. And uh, he would change the oil. It didn't matter if he had 10 miles or 100 miles. Change the oil and then underneath he sprayed the hole underneath with used oil and it looks just like undercoating. It but sounds like it's, it's idling at about 400 RPMs. Probably. Jeez. It's a fabulous car, man. It was wonderful to meet you the other day at Greenfield Village. It was even greater now because I got to see where you live. What a beautiful farm. You know, you never know who you're gonna meet at a car show. And uh, you know, even if you're not a Chrysler fan, sometimes you're attracted towards something like this. I was, and you get a great story out of it. Hopefully you'll meet somebody like Melvin, or maybe you'll meet Melvin one day. <laughs> Happy hunting to you.